Welcome to Vienna. Uh, today we're here for a special announcement. Stefan, what's the big news? Yes, uh, emerging announcement of Wertreiset and Grassfish. Yeah, we're here in downtown Vienna and um, quite interesting to give you some insights and to talk with the CEOs uh, about the rationale of the, the merger, uh, what their plans are in the future. And Stefan, uh, we visited some stores. Yes, a Volvo dealership in Sweden and a do-it-yourself market here in Vienna. And after that, um, we also provide you with a strategic analysis uh, of that merger. So what does it mean um, for the market? Uh, why is it so important strategically? Where, is it, uh, where it is a relatively small merger, two companies about five to seven million uh, in revenues. So combined revenues of 13 million, um, not the biggest one, but a very interesting one. So let's hear what the CEOs have to say. We are very proud to have Johann Lind and Roland Grasberger here. Johann Lind is CEO of Vertisit and uh, Roland Grasberger is CEO of Grassfish. Thank you for being here. Johann, Vertisit and Grassfish are merging. What's the rationale behind the deal? First of all, I want to say that I've been in the industry t since 2008 when we founded the company in my apartment. Uh, and uh, I always uh, looked up to Grassfish. Uh, they have been one of the thought leaders in the industry and we always kind of had the shared vision of where this uh, industry are going. Uh, so um, for me, this is, uh, this is really a perfect match because we share the vision of how digital in-store will uh, create the future of the customer experience in retail. You position the merged company as an ISV Plus player. What does it really mean and what are the advantages of ISV Plus? Yeah, you can say that on one hand side of the industry, we have the full service provider. On the other hand, we have uh, the independent software uh, providers. And we really see that the core now is to have the platform in the center. Uh, that's where the markets are heading because uh, it's part of, of the ecosystem of the large, large retailers uh, and brands. But around that, we need also, also need to have the consultancy services, uh, looking at the, the customer journey, uh, see what, what touch points could create the, a meeting, uh, like create the value in the customer meeting, uh, and uh, really create and craft the experiences and the solutions based on the platform. Uh, and and that's, that solution could be carried out by the, the integrators. Uh, and that's, so it's, it's somewhere uh, between, yeah. Technically, where ties it is acquiring Grassfish. What is the new owner structure? Yeah, I, I should more say a merger, uh, with more of a merger of equals. So Roland and Alexander will be major shareholders in the group. Uh, and uh, I, I think that that's why we want to, uh, to perform uh, uh, this, uh, this merger, is that uh, we really want to do the journey together and become the leader in uh, digital in-store. Good. I think the company will double in size, right, in revenue, and you will have 120 staff, so it's quite big. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, uh, it, we, we go from uh, 50, 60 employees to 120 overnight. So it's, it's a huge step for both me and Roland. <laughs> yeah. Roland, you've been approached by many integrators in Europe. Um, why did you choose not to merge with the big four and to go with Wertasit? Simply because uh, the integrators, integrators were not the perfect match for us. So we uh, say or we believe that the software is the focus for especially for large corporations. Uh, which is the software and the solution is part of the ecosystem, the IT ecosystem. And uh, the integration is a different project and uh, a different role. And uh, we didn't want to become a small part of a big integrator because uh, we don't think that this reflects the, uh, yeah, the, the importance of the software. And uh, we didn't also not look for partners, uh, but uh, with where ties it, we found the perfect match because we share the same vision, we want to go the same route. So it, um, yeah, we think we really have luck that two well-performing companies here with the same vision found together to create something really big. Um, will Grassfish continue to work with partner integrators and with which role? Yeah, because of our role as uh, the software and solution provider, we need an ecosystem of partners. So we have integrators uh, who uh, have to deliver all the hardware and mount it and service it. Uh, we have creative partners, uh, we have partners in other software fields that uh, complement the offering. And uh, this is a very important part for a successful large project. And uh, this is an ecosystem uh, that we grow, that we nurture and uh, 
Uh, the only difference to the past is that uh, the software now, uh, or the software provider, is at the same level and has the same importance, uh, and, uh, but the ecosystem is necessary to deploy a yeah, successful project. What can GrassFish users really expect from your platform in the next 18 months? What we do is uh, now in our development uh, is continuing the way to transform the digital signage platform into a digital experience platform, which means uh, that the rules, how to manage content, how to bring in content, how to do the analytics, uh, yeah, resembles then more closely the way how online works. So this, uh, because uh, if you do this, then it's much easier for large corporations to manage the whole, uh, yeah, customer journey as one and uh, uh, yeah and this means that we will go away partly from uh, away from playlists so playlists will be also supported in the future but uh, we think that in larger uh, project uh, content uh, will be managed uh, following rules uh, following um, properties that come in from interfaces uh, and uh, uh, on a way where it conforms uh, to the other uh, channels to the online channels and mobile channels uh, to yeah to create something homogeneous. Johan, another deal closed. What is your vision for Vertasit and what do you want to achieve in the next months? Uh, for me, it's not uh, just another deal closed. It's a really a huge uh, step. Uh, I think it's 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 a milestone for the company. Uh, of course, we will continue to look at the market for uh, strategic acquisitions going forward. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but. Uh, it also takes us uh, uh, three years ahead of the strategy in really evolving the industry and be at the forefront where we see the shift in uh, how, how this industry will, will work and uh, what uh, at least uh, large uh, global brands and leading retailers are looking for in the marketplace. So uh, that's about it for now and I hope to give you more information when we go further and roll out the strategy. Thank you to the both of you. Really interesting insights and exciting to see that new M&A activity is taking place and I think the whole industry will watch uh, what your new formed and merged company will do in the future. Thank you for having us. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you. Thank you. So this was some really interesting insights from the CEOs of the new merged company. Um, but to better understand what the two companies are really all about, we went to Sweden to visit one of the Volvo dealers and we also had some inside looks into one of the biggest DIY players in Austria to give you some insights what the signage project made by Wertesit and by Grassfish all around. This is a dealership, so it's owned and paid for by a dealer, not by Volvo itself. So it's not a shiny showroom somewhere in the middle of Stockholm. This is real country, this is you know, where people really buy cars, right? Uh, exactly. Because I think uh, it's really easy to find that fantastic flagship stores. Yeah. Uh, but what we need, really need to solve is like, how can we create the, the future of retail and the best customer experience of tomorrow, which work in 150 locations? Yeah. So, so it needs to be scalable and needs to be affordable at the end of the day too, right? Exactly, and create a lot of value in the customer meeting. Yeah. Good. So um, before we go inside, Give us a short introduction. How many screens are in here? I, we saw LED, we saw LCD. So what is the, some, yeah. some fact? Uh, there are 20 different applications. We call it different touch points yep. that have a specific purpose and specific communication. And I think the screens are uh, around 50 screens in here. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're inside the dealership and this is the welcome desk, right? Exactly. And uh, we continue to uh, talk about the heritage, like the brand experience. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, you can say, di digital communication that tries to streamline all the communication that you connected to your life with your car. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the ap uh, applications, it's about financing, it's about the local dealership communication to their related services. And uh, we, it's really important to, to have that uh, communicated in a way that uh, you could say is um, uniform mm -hmm. and connected to the Volvo brand in, in the right way. We are here in front of the Let's Do It store. It's a brand new shopping center. Thanks for having us here. And um, so give us a short insight. What's so special about this concept? So Let's Do It. Uh they created a really new concept. Uh, so compared to other traditional stores, uh, they are focusing also on the younger generation, millennials and uh, their needs and experiences. And uh, 
Uh, and what is really a special, uh, really special about it is that the whole shop concept uh, has been built from uh, ground up uh, totally new in this direction. So it means that it's not only there are not only digital touch points, but when you walk through the door, you see it is as an open, transparent environment. But uh, you see also the different zones, like no nonsense zone, like a test and try zone, and. What's also important is uh, that uh, they want to build up or support the communities. So you have see the team Bosch and the team Husqvarna and the team Stiel because uh, every customer has his favorite brands. And uh, this is uh, visible throughout the whole store. And uh, the digital touch points are part of the store concept to support uh, the experience uh, that uh, yeah, the customers want based on their online experience. So you can uh, get much more information on the different products. You can self-explore uh, the shop and the products. You can compare products. But uh, uh, the interactive elements are also used uh, to support the sales process for the salesperson. So that's a very important uh, point that uh, the salesperson is in contact uh, with the customer and uh, the digital touch points are used to support the sales process so that the customer uh, sees much uh, better than just uh, hearing it. What are, for example, really the properties and difference between pro uh, between different products? So we heard from the CEOs uh, all the information about the merger. Stefan, what really does it mean for the industry? Pretty big news, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, if you look at the two companies, uh, pretty similar size, uh, both of them. So it really is more a merger than an acquisition. Um, I mean, they have a bit different uh, business models so far. So uh, Vertize is more of a traditional integrator, but also very active in software with dice. And uh, Grassfish, uh, coming from a software background, uh, now moving into what they call, or what we call, uh, ISV plus model. And that's the interesting aspect for us, I think. Florian. Well, uh, what ties it? Quite interesting, quite a big track record, uh, lots and lots of acquisitions in the past years. The majority of them were smaller Swedish uh, integrators um, in the past and, and software companies. There were notably two acquisitions. Um, the, one of the bigger ones was DICE, uh, which is also a Swedish software company, digital Sunish software company in the north of, um, of um, Gothenburg, Gothenburg. And the second one was, uh, uh, was in-store media uh, with locations and, and offices in Sweden as well in the UK. So quite, quite impressive. Yeah. And now it's Grassfish. Um, and where does it take them? Um, they are now number one in-store digital signage uh, software player in Europe. Um, in the Nordics, um, they are probably number three um, full service integrator in the traditional model. Um, the combined companies are a leader in the automotive uh, retail sector with clients like BMW, like Lamborghini, um, or like Volvo in Scandinavia. And um, their vision is to be really the leader um, in in-store solutions, the expert for in-store solutions. Um, a very interesting positioning, as we think. Florian. Yeah. Um, so, Talking about ISV Plus, and I think, Stefan, that's something which is really, really relevant because that's a new category they more or less formed. Um, and it's somewhere in between a typical independent um, software vendor, an ISV, like DICE, what they have in their group, and um, on the other hand, a full service integrator. So for them, it's something which uh, Roland also mentioned. It's really they believe the software becomes the major part, the integral part of, of, a, of a digital signage concept. And um, that this platform is so, so complex and so big that it needs always, definitely always needs a software company to be involved in this project. So from their perspective, a digital signage integrator is not perfectly, uh, perfectly suited for uh, doing something like this with a third party software. So for them, it's really ISV plus. Um, also, obviously, Stefan, you know, doesn't involve too much hardware, and it, it's all about recurring revenue. Yeah. And it's, from a strategic perspective, it's very interesting to see, because uh, they are moving into that battleground um, of DSXP solutions on a more international level, but with a model that differs significantly significantly from what the big four are doing, because they are targeting that same market. So more complex customer journey, digital customer journey driven projects for international brands. But whereas the big four are really offering that 
all from one supplier, all from one company. Um, the new company, Vertizer's Grassfish, they are relying on a partner ecosystem. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out, what the market actually um, accepts more. Um, but there are obviously also challenges um, to that um, setup that we're going to see how it works out. Yeah, one of the main challenges obviously is a partnership, the ecosystem. Do the existing partners, new partners really accept the new model uh, ISV plus or do they see that as a threat to their existing business model? And the second one is access to customers. Um, because in the past, historically, the lead has always been with an integrator. Now with ISV+, Plus, they want to change that they want to have access to the customer and then choose which kind of integrator um, gets to, to roll out the project. And last but not least, scale. How do you scale a project like this, a concept like this, um, as a pure ISV? It's quite simple. ISV Plus is somewhere in between. So it will be interesting to see, Stefan. It's really going to be interesting to see what, how it impacts ISVs, how it impacts full service integrators or classical integrators and how it impacts partners. The challenge for, for the big four is really with alternative business models. How can they you know, position themselves and how can they really you know, continue of winning, winning next projects and especially if they don't have a, have a software themselves. So that's definitely a, a challenge. And maybe it's also a revival of the platform first strategy. Um, many in the past when Digital Sunish started 15 years ago, it was all about hardware, then it changed to platform, then it came back a little bit about software and embedded. And maybe the ISV Plus really model really focuses on, puts the focus back more on, on this uh, platform first strategy with Digital Sunish becoming more Digital Sunish experience platforms and eventually maybe DXP. There's a midterm potential conflict um, with ISV and integrator model. So with ISV Plus, with a new merged company, they will start continue. They will start to continue more to compete with the existing partners. So obviously there's a, there's a co co potential conflict coming up. Um, then there's a multi-brand approach. Um, there will be Dice and Grassfish, two different software platforms. Uh, the Dice one will be more for uh, you know for full service integrators and other integrators who continue to use um, the software and uh, which they have been accustomed to. But obviously, you know, with the Grassfish platform and their way of working with integrators, there could be some potentials coming up in the in the, in the potential conflicts coming up in the, in the future. And last but not least, um, maybe the new setup also offers new potential for especially IT and AV integrators who don't feel comfortable of designing and creating digital signage concept, but who love to roll it out, to deploy it, and to maintain it. So this ISV Plus could be exactly what they were looking for. So it's always positive and negative things, obviously, Stefan. Yes. And although it's probably not the biggest acquisition or merger we have seen in the past uh, month and years, it's definitely, from a strategic per uh, perspective, a very interesting one, because uh, they are trying to establish a new model with ISV Plus. And uh, for us, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. And uh, yeah, we're going to stay um, in touch with them and stay in touch with the market to see how that's moving the market. Like. Yeah. And Stefan, one last thing. Um, there have been already questions, you know, will it be now, now the big five? No, we believe it will be the big four plus one. So the ISV plus model is still something quite different to the typical integrators. So we're looking for more M&A news, uh, which we are sure will come up in the next couple of weeks and months. And uh, yeah, that was our analysis here from Vienna. Thank you.